On this episode of Sailing Britican, Simon will show you his passage plan from St. Vincent to Beckway and the Grenadines. We'll show you what it looks like when an anchor drags, some sights of Beckway including the town, some beaches, and a walk across the island. Simon will explain the process to repairing the black caulk on our teak deck. We'll show you the liveaboard cruiser hangout, show you what our daughter Sienna gets up to on a daily basis, a crazy rainstorm, a small bug issue, and find out if this situation ends well for Simon or not. Okay, here we are in St. Vincent in Cumberland Bay. We're going to set off really early in the morning. We're going to release the line and go out minding this reef, going out down along the island, going south to Beckway. And we love Beckway, we've been there before. Going to come in, and where we're going to anchor is Prince Margaret Bay. We're going to try and get in as close as we can because it's nice and sandy there, and it gives us a little bit more shelter. It's more difficult to anchor out here. There's less places, and it's not as great holding as in by the beach. It's about 17, 18 miles, and it should take us about three hours. So we're in Cumberland Bay, and we had the long line back to a tree and one of the uh, boat boys was kind enough to untie it for us because it was going to be very early in the morning I didn't want to go for a swim that early. Off we went and we left just before Rhonda who followed us out. Yeah and the, the whole trip from St Vincent down to Beckway was easy, there was nothing to report, it was just you know very light winds and um, we sailed most of the way. Just had a nice easy sail. It was great. So thank you Cumberland Bay for having us. Absolutely spectacular, magical place. We'll definitely come back here. Cumberland Bay, it was fantastic. Thank you Cumberland Bay, it was awesome. And you can see on the horizon quite a few fishing boats. A bunch more boats out here. They're all rowing. And we think this here is Wallaby Bay. And that's where the Pirates of the Caribbean part of it was filmed right in there. And that land you see just beyond is Beckway. And that's where we're going. How's your trip so far? It's good. <laughs> How's your coffee? Very good. Did you just wake up? Yes! We're almost we there. Have got no nibbles yet. We're going around it right now, but uh, we'll see. Okay, good luck, because we could do with some tuna over. You know that we lifted anchor and left? No! Two hours ago! You've been sleeping real sound, like a little angel. <laughs> this, um, this bird is trying to get our lure. You do not want to ever catch a bird. Good job! Good job. <laughs> we're sailing, which is fantastic. There's very, very little wind, but enough wind. We're going six knots. Beckway's right there. Oh, what are you going to do when we get there? Homework. Homeschooling! Da, 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 da. Funniest thing in the world. Dawa and Sienna are playing Minecraft. Oh. Sienna's roped him in. So once we got to Beckway, the first thing you do is find a place to anchor. We did it the same way we always do it. We dropped our anchor in what looks like a sandy patch and we let it hit the bottom. Simon puts the boat into reverse and we let out as much chain as we think we need. And it's usually we do about five times the depth of the water that we're in. So if we're dropping in 10 meters, we'll drop 50 meters. That's right, yeah. yeah. So as soon as we let all the chain out, what we do is we lock the winch so that it's holding the chain and we tell Simon to go backwards. Mm -hmm. He puts it in reverse and uh, the chain straightens out and the anchor digs in hopefully. Yep. But in this case it didn't and this is what it looks like when the chain is, or when the anchor is not dug in, it kind of bobbles along. We have anchored in Beckway several times and it seems like right by the beach is really, really good. 
go a little bit out further yeah. and it's kind of like a flat rock and so the beach was too busy for us to get near so we tried to anchor and we did drag yeah we did but it, it's not a, it's not a problem yeah. it's something that you're going to encounter the best anchors in the world will only bite if there's something they can bite into and yeah. and parts of the beckway anchorage is it's not very good so we just yeah. dragged yeah so we dragged and so we just picked up and we put the anchor down someplace else uh we did all the normal stuff at bit and then simon jumped off the boat and went to inspect yeah, so what i'm doing now we've anchored uh it dragged once and we found some sand and it's bit and we're ha I'm happy with it so fast but I'm going to go and dive on it and what I'm looking for is following the chain to see if there's any rocks or coral because I don't want to be damaging any coral and I don't want to be damaging any chain if there's too many rocks and then I'm going to go and check the anchor that it's dug in nice and nice and firm and I'm happy with it visually. When I dived down for the anchor, turtle was right next to it and it scared me. <laughs> and how's the anchor look? It looks okay. It's very hard, uh, like compact sand over like rocks, and there's lots and lots of rocks around, so that's probably why we did dig um, in, to dig begin. in the first time because it bounced over some rocks. Okay, are you feeling quite secure about I'm it? I'm feeling very secure about it, okay. um, but I wouldn't want to stay here too long because there's rocks all around and it's going to damage your chain. Rondo's coming in, uh, they're going to come in and anchor right next to us. The three biggest mistakes we see new cruisers make regarding anchoring is that they have the wrong anchor for the type of seabed they're trying to anchor in, or they simply don't have a modern anchor. They don't have enough chain to properly let out enough scope, and they don't actually know how to properly set an anchor to decrease the likelihood of dragging. If you're a newbie, make sure to get my 32-page manual on how to anchor successfully. The guide will prevent you from making amateur mistakes in a busy anchorage, prevent your anchor from dragging, prolong the life of your anchoring equipment, and ultimately enable you to have a good night's sleep while on the hook. So after we anchored, me, Kim, Sienna and Dawa went into town to do a bit of exploring. Beckway is a very safe place, but it's highly advisable in all of the Grenadines to lock your dinghy. In fact, we not only lock the dinghy to the dock, but we also lock the outboard to the dinghy. The great thing about Beckway is that you can get stuff on the water. So you can get water, diesel, ice, you can even have your laundry taken away for you. And there's a guy that comes around and sells baguettes. And I think even somebody sells t-shirts. Yeah. So on the water stuff comes to you. But then when you go to land and you go into the little town, you there's a great provisioning shop for, for yachts. There's a fantastic chandlery yep, to it? get all sorts of boat stuff. Yeah, it's very good. Didn't used to be very good, but they've changed ownership and it's it's really actually surprisingly good for such a small island. Yeah, and there's a Digicel there, so if you need to tap up your cell phone coverage, there's lots of like produce stands and there's a grocery store. You can get gasoline if you need it for the outboard. Yep. So it's a really cute little town and it's got a lot of stuff. And on top of that, it's got some cute little restaurants too. Mm -hmm. Great pizza there. Yeah. And also, if you want, when you get off of the dock, there's loads of taxis there to take you around the island, which is great. So we've been to Beckway a lot of times, and um, I have, I think I have at least one more video on, on Beckway that you might want to check out that probably shows a little bit more of touring the island. But the one thing I really love about Beckway is the fact that you can walk around and you can see so many fruit and nut trees. Mm. You could probably just walk around and pick stuff off trees and eat all day long. So we went for a walk with Judy from Dauntless and our friend Sarah from Rondo and we took Sienna and Caitlin and we walked from the Anchorage over to another coast on Beckway and uh, well I'll show you all the different fruit we found, it was quite fun. Awesome. Okay, you figure out. You want some? Kitty Grace loves 
loves that. <laughs> All right, oh, it's so here. sweet. Oh, it's so sweet. I'll never believe you again. <laughs> well, you know, if I was prepared. Yeah. Oh, it's so sweet. Yeah, it that's wasn't a, very sweet. That's it's totally not sweet. They're right. like, it's so it's sweet. It's a good trick. It's super sweet. You gotta try it. We're like, oh. Yeah, right. Roll it in sugar. Uh huh. And then. Then it's anything with sugar yeah. is palatable. So, yeah, then you can eat it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's really cool. It's like very. They almost look like little peppers growing yeah. there. They do. So those, those are, are definitely pomegranates. I've seen those small before. Yeah. 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 Oh, those plums, they are, Sarah. So, tail down is sheep, tail up is goat. Those are sheep. Caitlin's just found a mango. Yeah, they said if they're still juicy. I think you can eat these. Pretty darn sure. Can you cook them? I. Ooh, really tart. It's sour. <laughs> I heard you cook them. <laughs> you can eat them. Yeah. yeah. But look at all the mangoes. Okay, so here's pomegranates. Beautiful. To the beach. So while the girls went and off for a walk and had a bit of fun, me and Dower did a bit of maintenance on our deck, which is going to take months. What we did was we'd got some cork in from the chandra we just we talked about, and we we dug out the old cork in, dug down into the wood a little bit to make it deeper, cleaned it all out, taped it all up, and then put the cork in. in. And after we put the corking in, we um, used a putty knife to push it all down and flatten it all out, let it dry for about 40 minutes and then take the tape off and make sure it looks good. Yes, and this is why you don't want a teak deck. Mm -hmm. Because we are doing this every stop we make and it just, you know, no matter how hard you try and keep on top of it, yeah, it's, an, it's one of those never ending battles. and. Uh, yeah, I'd never ever buy a teak deck again. Just a just a tip. Okay, so the place that we usually anchor off of is just back from the town. So we're kind of um, behind the point. What's that called? Is that called Lower Beckway or? No, no, it's called Prince Margaret's Beach. Yeah, so we anchor right off of Prince Margaret's Beach. And it's fantastic because it's it's generally quite quiet and it's a very long stretch of beautiful beach. Yeah. There's one like bar pub there and then there's cute little shacks, you know, tiny shacks where you could buy real cheap beer and yeah. stuff too. Um, but it's quiet. The little pub bar has Wi-Fi, has good sandwiches and stuff. Um, and the great thing is that's where all the cruisers get together. So all the kids meet up there after homeschooling, all the adults meet up there for sundowners or to have a picnic or yep. you know even we've had birthday parties there so this is like where the cruisers generally hang out in, in Beckway.
this time. Oh, I made it. So we get tons and tons of questions uh, from people asking, you know, what's Sienna's uh, education like? What's her social life like? Um, I think Backway is such a great island to really show you uh, how many kids there can be around. We, when we arrived, we were with Rondo and then our friends from Pier Vida showed up and then there was more kid boats. I think in the end, maybe I counted 15 to 20 kids, which is fantastic. So. Once Sienna gets done with her homeschooling, she generally has to entertain herself for a little bit. Oh, I am human. Now I want to go in the boat. So she'll play Legos or she'll do a puzzle. Okay, we got one left to go. We got one left to go. Come on, Sienna, put it in. she might even watch a little bit of TV but once all the kids are done with their homeschooling and usually have lunch then they get on the VHF call each other and plan what to do for the rest of the, the day and it's fantastic the kids go out in the paddle board they go out in little dinghies they go over each other's boats um, they build forts eventually have sleepovers there's all sorts of stuff they do yeah, yeah I think I think Sienna was uh, learning how to fish while she was there with Mikey. Yeah. So that was great. So in an evening, sometimes the kids can go onto one boat because there's some older kids there that can look after them. And us adults can go out for a nice quiet drink at the local bars or on the beach. Or it could be a little bit more lively and we go out dancing. Sometimes we do. How often does this happen? Let's pinch the and sometimes we go out with other live aboard um, kid boats and you know we bring the kids and we all go out for a nice meal and it's a great way to get to know the other live aboards next to us and you know go out and have a enjoyable evening yeah. and sometimes the kids all come over to our boat and we have a sleepover and uh, Sienna is very famous for one of her forts so on this particular occasion the kids made a huge fort and decided to sleep in it so we're having a sleepover tonight on Brilliken and they've made a fort it's huge it is huge are you excited Sienna yeah Okay. Where where are you guys? In the fort. Nathan's oh. in the fort right now. Alright. Oh, I see eyes. No eyes. Oh my god, let's go. Bye. The great thing about being a cruiser is you meet some great people, but the sad thing about it is when you're having to say goodbye, especially with our great friends on Pure Vida because we spent so long together but they were having to go back to the States much quicker than we were planning on doing, so they had to leave us in Beckway. And that's really hard when you're saying bye-bye to good friends, especially when you, you spent so much time together. Yeah, because we sailed with them pretty much all the way down from the Bahamas. Yeah. So it was an extremely sad, mm -hmm. sad moment to say goodbye to them. I mean, sometimes you know you're going to see people later, but um, the chances were that we weren't going to see him for a while and if ever again, which yeah. is really sad. Yeah, it was, it was really sad. So where we were anchored was a little far out, so we decided after some boats had cleared out to go into our favourite spot, which is closer to the beach in beautiful white sand. So these are some of the pictures of us doing it. So everybody pictures that living on a boat, sailing around you, they picture the sun, the warmth, you know, the beautiful beaches. Um, I think what people don't realize is that there is definite rainy seasons and there is definitely times when it's a torrential downpour. So um, this is a particular moment in Beckway when the heavens opened and uh, well, see for yourself what it's like. It's really 
really blowing. <laughs> and I'm on the boat by myself, so I hope that, uh, I hope our anchor holds tight. <laughs> So after this big downpour, we found out about what the locals call rain bugs. There was literally thousands of them flying around and literally uh, over a thousand landing on our boat. And the locals were telling you, you have to get them off while it's still wet because they get rid of their wings and then the wings stick to your gel coat and you just cannot get it off. So Dara and I spent hours just washing down the boat and getting the bugs off. And eventually uh, the time came to leave Beckway um, and we had an absolutely fantastic time. We met a lot more kid boats that we were going to develop future relationships with on down the line as we made it towards Grenada. It's, it's always been a fantastic island. It really has everything. Yeah. So I can't say enough about Beckway. If you're going to pick a, a, a charter uh, somewhere in the Caribbean, highly recommend somewhere in the area around Beckway. That's great. We'll see them soon. Thank, Thank you, you Beckway, for having us. It's been great. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Mm. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting ready now. Are you sure? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Paddington bear. Paddington oh, bear. Oh no. It's my hair looks disgusting Ooh. and I'm getting too hot. We're going on a date night. Yeah, so Dawa just dropped us off and we're gonna walk into the Beckway. Yeah, and he's missed the he's missed the boat. Yeah, we're watching to make sure he gets back on the boat because Sienna's on there. And he's, uh, he's missed it. He keeps missing the back of the boat. <laughs> it is blowing around a lot though, yeah. so give him it's not his fault. Remember to visit SailingBritikin.com to find out more about our sailing guides, Britikin Club, and learn about our week-long Britikin Live Aboard Sailing Experience offering.